Black Book Gallery. Yeah. Welcome to the Common. We're here to celebrate the work of Eddie Kamwanga Lumba. And we wish very much he could be here with us. It's not easy traveling from the Congo DRC to get to London because of many reasons, not only COVID, but all the entry requirements. He'll be here next week. <laughs> many of you who know me know my great love is to travel to very remote areas looking for art. And in 2011, I traveled to the interior of the Congo and was lucky enough to have my mind blown. All rational thought goes out, and all you have left is your soul. These paintings reveal what the Congo revealed to me each day. I saw ceremonies, I saw different peoples coming from different areas. And it was full of, the, you saw a lot of the terrible history of the Congo, but you also saw a people of wonder and ecstatic revelations. And these paintings reveal also the terrible history of the Congo, but they're full of magic and wonder. along with a short time at the same time that we met Eddie Kamwanga. It was back in 2015 and we saw some of his works at the Sachi and he later wrote to us. And so that's how we got introduced to Eddie Kamwanga. He had a great supporter at that time, Gabriela Salgado, who is here with us and who we thank very much for her wonderful support of Eddie. Um, and we did his first exhibition here in 2016 that was called Mangrito. And if anybody wanted to see any of those works, or one work, please go to the Royal Academy. Royal Academy Summer Show, they decided to hang a banner about 14 meters long and 7 meters high on the facade of the Royal Academy with one of the paintings from this exhibition. So it's just wonderful to see the steps from that time, from 2016 to 2021, where he's now hanging in the center of London. His second exhibition, Fragile Responsibility, I remember with glee, because I was in Casablanca at the airport at midnight, proofreading this catalog. <laughs> and you know, there's no way you can forget that, ever. <laughs> so that was his exhibition at that time, and then this moved on to the exhibition here. We started discussing this exhibition back in spring 2019. And it actually took quite a long time to get to fruition. There were so many roadblocks in the way, not only there was COVID, um, there were, you know, he had to work on the exhibition, but finally this year he produced this magnificent body of work, um, Ghost of the Present, which I'm so happy to have here at the gallery. Now, I know Sandrine Kola, she will introduce this exhibition, but before she does, Chile will introduce yes. Sandrine. Okay. <laughs> Very good. Yes. I'm very delighted to present you a very beautiful woman tonight, Sandrine Goulart. Sandrine has a doctorate in African art history. She works especially with contemporary history. She is curating, um, she's writing a book. Her current project examines the history of photography in the colonial Congo. And she is a researcher and an independent curator. She was the artistic director of the sixth edition of the Lumbumbashi Biennale in the Democratic Republican Republic of the Congo. The best news. Yes, we're doing another book with Rizzoli. Thank you, Constanza, who is here with us from Rizzoli. And this book will be about Eddie's book. And Sandrine will be contributing a beautiful essay on that book. 
of Eddie Kamwanga Ilonga. So I'm not the curator of this exhibition. I wish I were. I'm not, but I'm really, really happy to be here to introduce it. Eddie's work first caught my eye while I was preparing the 2019 Lubumbashi Biennale in the Democratic Republic of the Congo. As a curator, I traveled to Kinshasa a year prior and once again, my mind was blown by the incredible energy of the city's artists. I often say that Congolese artists are the most resilient and that for them the term Afropolitan is more than just a label. In Kinshasa, I was stunned by the strong sense of being a quinoa artist, of being from Kinshasa, of being in face with uh, you know, the city's bewildering reality. But at the same time, Kinshasa artists also demonstrated hyper-connectivity with the world. And they constantly knock down the borders and the obstacles that are erected in front of them. Tonight's opening is another example of this Congolese transcendence. As is too often the case, visa issues prevent Eddie from being here tonight. But his painting's power makes us all feel his talent and spirit and the provocative conversation that his work sparked with the world. Eddie was not in Kinshasa when I was last there in 2019, but his name kept coming back again and again, and I looked for his work on Google, like we all do. Don't look at me like that. I was immediately seduced, but also intrigued by the unique blend of a strong painting technique, his majestic and enigmatic figures, Manbetu and more, all deeply anchored into Congolese heritage, and also this fusion of everything I just mentioned with that heritage, of that heritage with an aesthetic looking into the present and the future. I was not able to include his work in the Biennale, but since then I have been resolute to create new opportunities to work with him, and I'm very happy that this has just presented itself with this um, book project. With this new series that we see today, that we are celebrating today, Eddie also continues the work of artistic research into the history of the Congo. And it is striking to see how Congolese artists have become the most acute observers and thinkers about their country's past and its strong repercussions for the present. And thinking of other uh, very big names like Sami Baloji, and I think that Eddie is definitely walking into the footsteps of his senior. It is an incredibly exciting moment for, content for Congolese contemporary art, both for the international state, but also locally. Um, a few years ago, Bodis Isekengeles just was the first black African artist to get a solo retrospective at MoMA, 2019, I think, so imagine that. Uh, but you have so many other um, African artists, Congolese artists, Sami Baloji that I just mentioned, Jean Ketambayi, Gozet Rubondo, George Senga, Hilary Balu are all thriving nowadays. Next year, you will have two Biennales in the Congo taking place in Kinshasa. You will have the Lubumbashi Biennale taking place again in 2022. And all have earned international recognition for the incredible quality of Congolese artists. More largely, we have witnessed these last years an incredible boom of African painting, and I think Eddie partakes in this new generation of African painters taking the medium in new directions. I'm extremely happy to see his work develop the way it does, and I'm happy to participate in this new book. As we see in the Congo, now it's time for the libations to the ancestors to thank them for you know, their protection and for looking up to us tonight. I wish you a good evening. There will be a talk here on Saturday morning, unusually for us, 11 o'clock, with a panel of people speaking, and that will be the two people who have helped curate this show through their research and working with uh, Eddie directly in Kinshasa and with uh, Gerard Houghton, who will be uh, the panel moderator, and Eddie on a Zoom. <laughs> so I welcome you to come here on uh, 
11 o'clock, Saturday morning. And to reserve your place, you can check at the front desk. Okay? Thank you.